obviously a very physically demanding performance. What do you think? Uh, Jim, your display of supernatural powers is very controversial, but very convincing. I want to believe that there is a Raymond on the other side. Besides, there is a, a flair of honesty about you that brings credibility to what you say. Very interesting act. Chris, I, I've just got to know you over the last couple of weeks, but I can see you're itching to say something here. I just think it's comical, quite frankly. Um, <sighs> before I even move ahead here, I'll invite Ori and uh, your friend Raymond right now. I have uh, two envelopes here. I will give you a million dollars of my personal money right now if either one of you can tell me specific details of what's... Now, don't tell me about the energy or that it's not okay, the right man, time. I'll but tell just you tell what me what, what's tell in you here right now. You an... Tell me right now what's, it, what's in the envelope. I find you an ideological tell me, tell bigot. Me, That's what I find. what's in the envelope you right now. You claim... Tell me what's in the envelope. Tell me what's in the envelope. Don't give me all this bullshit. Tell me what's in the envelope. Tell me what's in the envelope. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Tell me, tell me what's in the envelope. Right here. Guys, 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 guys. Listen to me. You can't Okay, it's a live show. This is not planned. We'll see you after the commercial break. Stay over there. Chris, I can see you're itching to say something here. I just think it's comical, quite frankly. I will give you a million dollars of my personal money. He's not there to challenge me. I asked him a very, very simple question. What's you in the claim Apple? that Tell you me what's in the Apple. do Don't not give me believe all this in the Apple. Tell me what's in the Apple. Mr. Angel, I believe, is an ideological bigot. You saw his acting. My 10-year-old niece acts a lot more believable than he acts. Oh, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, you can Tell me, blah, blah. Tell me what's but in the Apple. Right here. Guys, 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 and I'm not going to stand for that. My name is James Randi, the Amazing Randi. I'm a magician. Okay, I have here a pen. For the past 25 years, I've been investigating the claims of psychics. A psychokinetic demonstration of a supernatural nature. Watch this. Psychics often say that an object can be moved using only the power of the mind. And it moves in a miracle fashion like that. Isn't that amazing? Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> Magicians can produce the same effect. Of course, I was just you know, blowing on the pen. But a little suggestion and a little distraction go a long way. As a magician, there's nothing I like more than a well-executed illusion. Just look at what my friend Jamie Ian Swiss can do. But there are those who use magic tricks for more than entertainment. They convince people that what they do is real, that they have special powers. Magical thinking, you know, is a slippery slope. Sometimes it's harmless enough, but other times it's quite dangerous. Uh, personally, I'm opposed to that kind of fakery, so I have no reservations at all about exposing these people and their illusions for what they really are. I've investigated the claims of hundreds of psychics. People aren't always happy with my conclusions, but I do have my supporters. In 1986, I was honored with a MacArthur Award. Unfortunately, most of the prize money went into defending myself against a series of libel suits related to one of my earliest and most controversial investigations. The subject was Uri Geller, a young Israeli who claimed to have supernatural powers. His remarkable affinity for metal and his psychic abilities are well documented all over the world. In the early 1970s, Geller became a superstar, the most famous psychic in the world. Okay, just a second, look at me. Visualize everything that you drew once more. He claimed to read people's minds. 
I'm going to show what I got. And if I'm wrong, then I'm wrong. But it really came very strong in. It could be two mountains with a round thing on or two people. I, I, uh, Can I show? I, yeah, I'd like to. Am I wrong? You're right. I'm right. Good. That's what I got. Oh, that's. He claimed to bend keys with his mind. I know you're going to think this is a setup, friends, and old Tom has never conned you on anything. This, this guy <laughs> is bending this key by rubbing it. It was bent at about a, a, a one degree angle when you started out, and it's coming up on 45 degrees now and still moving. <laughs> Are you thinking bend? Is that what you're yes, doing? Yes, I'm saying bend. You're saying bend? Yes. Hard, soft? No, I'm saying bend, 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 and sometimes I say bend, baby. Just you know, just but Geller was yes, best known for his way with spoons. Hold the tip of the spoon very, very gently. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm trying to melt the metal down. Yes, you see, I feel it. It's yes, going. It's getting loose. It. Yeah. And there's no force at all in my hands. Yes, so look what's happening. Like there's no force at all. Look, the whole, you see, it's becoming like plastic. The whole thing's plastic. ready to fall off. It's, and touch it here where I'm stroking it. There is absolutely no... That is eerie. <laughs> I have a wisdom tooth. <laughs> If you can see, the feeling. metal is beginning to crack here. It's breaking. Yeah, it's, you see? It's just look, it's, be, it's becoming, it's like look, putty wax. You see? Look. And keep, keep okay. stroking it this. here. And you keep see the, no, don't, don't, you see the crack is becoming bigger. Yeah. I melt the metal down, so, so. Wow. I yeah. want it to bend. I just say bend. Yeah, you melted it. You see? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Keep stroking your keys more. And people at home want your watches to start working, or if there is a radio that is broken, want it to start working. Television broken, just want it, all those broken things. Now, what Geller was saying, effectively, was that wanting things could make them so. I felt that claim had to be challenged. The media, even some scientists, were taking the Geller phenomena seriously. So I decided to show, for starters, that I could at least duplicate these effects using trickery. Now, a key can be displayed in such a way that it looks like it's bending. For example, just by stroking it, you'd swear that it's bending right up before your eyes. Magicians call this process ratcheting. But to do this, the key has to be bent in advance. The hard part, of course, is how to go about bending the key without letting them catch you. Now, there are several ways. I could, for example, take it and press the tip against the top of the table. That would do it. Or, in shifting my chair backwards or forwards, as I just did, I could have taken it and dropped it below the level of the table and pressed the tip on the chair I'm sitting on, which is exactly what I just did. Did I fool you? Mentalists have been duplicating hidden drawings for years. If Mr. Geller had chosen to use trickery, he could have used any of a number of techniques. One favorite involves turning your back and covering your eyes while the drawing is being made. Now, I've always wondered why you would cover your eyes while your back is turned. But melting metal is something else again. It's done something like this. And it gets soft. So I say to it, bend, 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 and it bends. Of course, it does take a little preparation. In fact, it takes a lot of preparation. Now, this isn't proof positive that other demonstrations aren't the result of supernatural power, but isn't this a more reasonable explanation? And then, of course, there was Mr. Geller's appearance on The Tonight Show. I got a call after they booked him to appear. Would you welcome, please, Uri Geller. Johnny had been a magician himself and was skeptical. I was asked to help prevent any trickery. Nice to see you. Thanks. We, uh, 
We this, have only met. This scares me. This, this scares you? Well, yeah. this is just, we just got some things together here. And I told I them said, to provide their own props and not to let Geller or his right. people anywhere uh, near them. Also, one of our staff members uh, did some drawings which have been sealed in an envelope. Uh, and I'd like you to take your own pace when you feel like you want to try anything. Right. Do you want to try that particular uh, experiment first? When I'll feel for it. When okay? you can? Sure. We'll start eliminating the ones that do not have the water. All right, without touching them. He is really suspicious, you know. Yes. I'm having a hard time with you. Okay, I don't mean to be, all right? I no, really don't. Just, just keep looking. Okay, let me rest a little, all right? All right. You know, I'm surprised because before this program, your producer came and he read me at least 40 questions you're going to ask me. Well, I can ask you all kinds of questions if you'd like, if you'd like me to ask no, you have questions. To, I have to have time. And, uh, um, Dark, we are back. Your Uri was telling me you, you, you don't feel, what, strong tonight? I don't Is feel that... strong. It's not all tonight. Right now I'm, feel, I'm feeling being pressed and then I can't... Well, I'm can't not trying to thing. press you, I really not. Uh, you no, know, you're only I'm... telling me, well, will you try that or that or that? Well, I thought that was the idea of... Uh, <laughs> of uh, no, I, I'm not, no, I'm not trying to put you down. Much to my surprise, the Tonight Show episode didn't have much effect on Uri Geller's career. Neither did the book that I wrote about him. But eventually, his star faded. Why people are so drawn to the irrational is something that has always puzzled me. And now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to meet a very interesting young man. He is only 21 years old. He's from Salt Lake City, and he's the founder of the Institute of Shaolin Gung Fu and the subject of much controversy. Welcome, James... Hi, Drake. All of us are very pleased, not just pleased, but excited to have you with us. Now, you claim to have psychic powers, don't yes. you? Yes, I do. Is this something that you have discovered recently, or have you known of it since childhood? How did it all begin? Well, everyone's born with it. It's just a matter of development. How did you develop your psychic power? Well, through uh, background and through training from an old Chinese master. What sort of training? Martial arts, Kung Fu, Kung Fu, and uh, laws of nature. Well, what was necessary to develop the psychic power? What did this uh, martial arts, arts training do for you, I mean? Well, it teaches you to recognize yourself, inner and outer self, to reach the fourth level of consciousness, matching the absence of the mind to the motions of the body. And you say that we all have this power. Everyone has it. And each of us could develop it. Absolutely. Now, you are going to demonstrate this psychic power on That's My Life. Yes. What are you going to do, James? I'm going to move a pencil for you. With just psychic powers? Just power. psychic powers. Very well. Here's a pencil, James. Show us. definitely move. Now, is it true that you can also turn the pages of this telephone directory? Yes, it is. And you will do that for us? I'll try. Should I take the pencil off the table? Sh yes. All right. There you are, James. You would like to open it to any page, or should you I'll, want me to do it? I'll be happy to. Hmm.
Okay, let's get it. I'll get it. Okay. Ready? These demonstrations, you did these same demonstrations on That's Incredible. Yes, I did. And as you know, the amazing Randy maintains that you did not use psychic power, but that it was trickery. Hmm. And he is prepared to pay you $10,000 if you can do it using psychic power. Randy, welcome back. James, Randy. Randy. Okay. Now, you saw James' demonstration from backstage. Yes, I did. And do you accept that as a demonstration of psychic power, or do you believe that he used trickery? I don't accept it as a demonstration of psychic power, Bob. I think that the solution is rather simple. I think that Mr. Heydrich is merely, to accomplish this effect, blowing on both the page and on the pencil. I see. Now, you originally asked him to demonstrate in two different ways his psychic power, but as I understand it, you are now prepared to waive the demonstration with the pencil. Yes, and the reason is rather simple, because the pencil reacts to even the currents of the air conditioning in this studio. It will be very difficult to try to put controls on it in such a way that normal currents of air that are present all the time would not move the pencil. For example, it moves very, very easily. All right, you're not going to ask him to do that. That's one down, one to go, James. You are prepared to pay him $10,000 if he can turn the page of the telephone directory with certain controls. Is That's that right. right. You have the $10,000, do you, Randy? I do indeed. It's uh, right here. I've carried this check now for going on 17 years, Bob. Uh, there it is, a check for $10,000 awardable to the gentleman should he be able to successfully perform the demonstration. I would like to introduce our panel of judges. And our first judge here, Dr. John Palmer, is a psychologist and professor of parapsychology at John F. Kennedy University. The seat right there, Dr. Palmer. We have Dr. Stephen Drake, astronomer and expert on stellar evolution at UCLA. And our third judge is Dr. Ronald Markman, assistant clinical professor of psychiatry at USC. Since my theory, as yet unproven, of course, is that it's accomplished simply by blowing, though rather cleverly, I must admit, done, there should be a way, a simple way, without a lot of instrumentation, to demonstrate that fact by using one very simple control. Now, uh, let me just emphasize that this one control will not stop him from turning the page of the telephone directory. That's right. But you hope to the judge's satisfaction will demonstrate that he is doing it with his breath. That's correct. All right. Now, what I have here is particles of a white plastic, which, when given a good puff, good heavy puff of air will, I think, rather conclusively show whether or not blowing is a method accomplished. Now, it will not perhaps in some way differentiate between genuine psychic power and actual blowing, but it certainly should be very interesting indeed to see what now occurs. Well, do you maintain that if the page of the telephone direct returns, that we will see movement in the styrofoam as well? I think that it's pretty logical. We've experimented with it, Bob, and that's what we have determined in the experiments. Very well. Are you ready to proceed? I am indeed. Judges, you're ready? James? Ready.
times am I going to have to do this? Once. This time. How many, how many once pages? More. Just one page. Once. This time and once more. Now, James, you had another question. Mm hmm. Uh, what is it? What would you like okay. to ask? Okay. The styrofoam and the lights form electricity which pulls the page. Look. It pulls the page down instead of freeing the pages. All right. And uh, what would you like to ask us? to ask Randy to allow you to do or for me to, to do? To either take something else, either lighter or something that is going to keep, that isn't going to form like a static electricity. You mean put something else, some other material around something here? Something that is not foam. Foam causes static electricity and the light is what heats it up. All right, Randy, is there anything else that you can put around the telephone directly? I've heard the question, but the question is not valid because it's making an assumption which is not true. The foam does not in any way create static electricity, and Mr. Heydrich, in demonstrating that the pages were clinging together, didn't demonstrate it to my satisfaction. I think uh, we could perhaps ask the judges for their opinion on that. I am not a scientist, so I'm not qualified to declare on it. Judges? Whatever static electricity exists in the styrofoam would not really affect the movement of the page or the clinging of the pages together. In my opinion. I would, I would add that if this is, in fact, psychic functioning, I don't really see why that would make a difference. Very well. Randy, would you allow me to turn perhaps half a dozen pages and then put them back? Uh, oh, yes, you may do that, please. That, James, I'll just lift up one, two. Lift them in a bunch, if you would, uh, Bob. Just Three. take about a quarter of an inch of them. All right, there, yeah, like them. that? That's fine. Gently place them down gently so it doesn't disturb the phone. I know. Uh, well, oh, I thought you. Oh, the other way. Them. Yeah, the other way. That's what I thought you meant. Would that sure be helpful to you? The static is going to still be here because of the foam. See, that's well, what I'm it saying. is the opinion of the judges that there is not enough static formed by the the foam to be a problem. So, uh, under the conditions agreed upon, it uh, would seem that now you should at least try with psychic power to turn the page of the telephone directory, James. Okay. It's not going to uh, turn for you? No, it isn't. Well, have you reached the point then when, uh, at, at which we can declare the demonstration terminated? This isn't a magician's trick. I can't just come up, bang, bang, and it's over. I have to be to where I can work with something small and then big, you know, to build up my own self. So this well, is, you know, the, it isn't uh, a trick. It has to be done, you know, this is just, it's power. It's, it's mental power. The conditions agreed upon have been fulfilled. Mm -hmm. And of course we can't change the conditions now in midstream. So in the opinion of our judges here, you have not seen a demonstration of psychic power, have you? Yes, that's correct. You have not. And Randy, uh, obviously James has not won the $10,000 with this demonstration. So it seems. Now you have heard what uh, James's explanation is do you have any comment to make on that? Bob, the, the comment very briefly is that I have gone through many hundreds of these tests with many hundreds of people who claim to have psychic powers. And quite frankly, it's more or less the same story every time. When a simple, direct, very uncomplicated protocol is used and the control is applied, the psychic forces don't seem to be present, if indeed they are ever present at all. I still look for some sort of evidence of psychic powers. To date, I have not found any up to this very moment. 
I am still totally unconvinced. Judges, do you have any further comment to make? You agree that you have not seen a psychic demonstration? Uh, yes, I, I would agree that I have not seen a psychic demonstration. Uh, I would like to say that as a parapsychologist, I believe that there are uh, other evidence under, under control conditions that do uh, demonst demonstrate, I would think, to a reasonable person that psychic phenomena do exist, yes. but uh, obviously not in this, in this uh, demonstration. I want to thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank Ladies you. and gentlemen, James Heydrich. Before I say goodbye to you, Randy, I do indeed appreciate the fact that you joined us on That's My Line, Dr. Palmer, Dr. Drake, Dr. Markman. Thank you so much. Thank you, Randy. The newspapers and other media will often feature the exploits and claims of so-called psychics, and they will rarely call those claims of power into question. I'm Danny Corum, and for the past 12 years I have been researching claims of psychic powers and presenting my findings in university lectures. Because of my expertise, a friend called and asked me to investigate a purported psychic who was influencing his brother. This program is about the shocking story that I found. It begins in Salt Lake City with a self-proclaimed psychic named James Heydrich. James Heydrich, martial arts instructor. Believed by many to be the world's leading psychic. Intellectually armed with a third grade education and claiming to be self-taught in the martial arts, one is easily impressed by Heydrich's exhibitions of strength. Cat-like agility. Power unleashed in a blow from only one inch. And the blind man's version of combat. Hydra claims he developed his abilities in adolescence and later perfected in manhood. Regardless of their size, Hydra could apparently move objects at will. When I arrived in Salt Lake, Heydrich and his abilities were attracting extensive coverage by the local media. Earlier this month, a 21-year-old martial arts expert, now living in Salt Lake, walked into the Salt Lake Tribune and said, I can move objects without touching them. Reporters and editors, skeptics and believers together watched as James Heydrich did, in fact, move pencils, turn pages in a notebook, and flutter the leaves of a plant. A publisher in Chicago wants to market a book about Heydrich's life and some producers of national programs, including Johnny Carson, and that's incredible, have also expressed an interest in what he does. When I move a pencil, I don't think I do. Is it a magician's trick? Can he control his breathing like a ventriloquist and literally blow the objects away? Heydrich refutes his critics by turning sideways and moving the object. Sometimes he has others join him, using them as the instrument in moving the object. Heydrich's influence quickly spread to other parts of the country. Appearances on primetime television and billed by the tabloids as the world's leading psychic, other more reliable sources such as the Associated Press stated, Heydrich has at various times and always in the presence of reporters done the following. Turn the pages of telephone books from 10 feet away and moved pens, pencils, plants, and other objects by giving them hard stares. A scientist and professor of electrical engineering at the University of Utah, after much testing, also concluded that Heydrich's demonstrations of mind over matter were indeed authentic. Coram discovered that the Salt Lake police were also interested in Heydrich. Detective Clegg informed Coram that Heydrich had served time in Los Angeles for kidnapping and robbery, and he was considered dangerous by the Salt Lake police. James is quite, has quite a lot of ability. He's quite athletic, mm -hmm. and he could be quite dangerous. Heydrich had to be approached with great care. And break the wrist. If it's used right, it can come and take the arm around your, the body and break it. There was no doubt in Coram's mind that Heydrich was a threat, 
but even more alarming, the negative influence on others and his powers. Are they psychic? James Heydrich, lethal prowess. Coupled with the ability to convince others of hidden powers and seemingly transfer his psychic abilities to his followers. But of all of Heydrich's demonstrations, this was the most impressive. Here, Heydrich causes a dollar bill to rotate at will on the head of a pin, even though it is sealed off from air currents and threads by a glass fish tank. Observant, Coram was uniquely qualified to discern if trickery was used. A world-class inventor of conjuring tricks, Danny Coram is a professional magician. With over 20 years invested in the mastering of his craft, Coram has developed the surgeon-like skill necessary to manipulate matter without regard for the laws of science. Or logic. The author and publisher of numerous texts for magicians, Coram specializes in a style of conjuring using borrowed objects and with his audience only a few inches away. You have a five dollar bill? I just happen to have one right here just with me. In his office, Coram displays his skill for a television interview. Show both sides. Nothing else in these. By the way, I pulled back my sleeve so you would know there's nothing up my sleeves, right? Certainly. You fold the bill in half once like this. You fold it in half again like this. Fold it in half again one more time. Now, don't take your eyes off the five. Lisa, I'll make you laugh. I'll make you cry. You've just kissed four bucks. Goodbye. Most people think I deceive them because my hands are quicker than the eye. Here you can see the same trick, but in slow motion. And it is still impossible to perceive how the trick is done. The principles of our craft have become so sophisticated that if Houdini were alive today, he too would be fooled by the tricks of the modern-day magician. In his book, The Fakers, Coram summarizes his investigations of alleged psychics, and it provides the basis for his university program, Fraud and the Supernatural, in which Coram presents many demonstrations which might easily be interpreted as psychic powers. Here, Coram has invited five people to join him on stage. Four of the participants are asked to write down the name of someone they know. This participant is asked to write down the name of a deceased person she knew. Now, wait until my back is turned before you begin writing on your slips of paper and then fold your slip of paper after you've written the name. Coram has never met any of these people before. The names are then folded, mixed, and given to the person on the end. The woman standing next to Coram is a registered nurse, taking his pulse. What I'd like you to do, ma'am, no, continue holding my pulse, is I'd like you to take up one of the slips of paper and hold it up to your forehead. Okay? If you notice any change in my pulse, let me know immediately. How's my pulse? Is it faster or slower? It's the regular pulse. About the, about the same rate? Okay. Would you please put that piece of paper down and pick up another one? How's my pulse? It's the same. It's not slowed down at all? No. All right, put that one down, pick up another one. How's my pulse? Fine. The same. Without warning, Coram's pulse stops. It stopped. I'm sorry? It stopped. I have no pulse. My pulse has stopped? Yeah. There is no pulse? You're holding the name of the deceased. Let me have it. Do not open it. Hold it pressed tightly against your head. I want you to look at me. This is a gentleman, wasn't it, that you knew very well. It was a friend. And his name is Bruce Prather. Yes. Frightening, isn't it? Although his audience is thoroughly entertained, many believe that what they have witnessed is not a magician's trick. Now, how many here, after seeing this last demonstration, 
might believe that I have some kind of a psychic power. Let me see a show of hands, please. But his audience is reassured. Everything that you saw this evening, everything was a trick. Psychic powers or cleverly concealed tricks. After several demonstrations, Coram was convinced that Heydrich was not a psychic, but a trickster employing brilliantly conceived stratagems of deception. Retreating to Dallas, Coram worked to duplicate Heydrich's methods. I believed Heydrich used a refined technique of exhaling puffs of air which caused the pencil to rotate. To accomplish this, the pencil must first be balanced on the edge of the table. Then, a puff of air is exhaled, not at the pencil, but at the table's surface. The air currents moving along the surface contact the delicately balanced pencil. To spin the pencil in the opposite direction, a puff of air is directed at the other end of the pencil. Duplicating Heydrich's head turn was far more difficult. With proper timing, I believe the head could be turned before the air currents reached the pencil. And with practice, success. The turning page was also accomplished by the same principle. If you release the puff of air at the tabletop, a page with an upturned edge flips over. I also experimented with a method where air currents were not involved. In this method, which cannot be disclosed, the page slowly turns. Illusion extraordinaire. But this was Coram's toughest challenge. Motion in a dollar bill. Sealed from trickery. My immediate thought was that Heydrich used a cleverly concealed device. But after examining the props, I ruled this out. I noticed, however, that the bill only revolved when Heydrich was at one end of the tank. So I had one of my crew divert Heydrich out of the room. As I anticipated, my airline ticket and credit card easily slid unhindered beneath the tank's edge. The doorway for Heydrich's air currents. A narrow gap between the tank and the table. Heydrich took advantage of the unobvious. Most fish tanks, due to imperfections, will not meet a table flush on all edges. Thus, the seal is imperfect. As in the pencil trick, Coram discovered that gentle puffs of air directed at the table's surface will carry under the tank's edge and hit the dollar bill, setting it in motion. Few magicians have ever taken such a simple and obvious principle and yet made it so deceptive. To be certain that Heydrich would not refute his explanations, Coram filmed each of Heydrich's demonstrations in Salt Lake City with restrictions. A strategically placed and highly sensitive microphone thwarted the pencil illusion. We knew that Heydrich was afraid that our microphone could pick up his blowing. I'm going to need music, I'll bet. You think so? Yeah, I just can't, I can't. Uh, it's too quiet. He wanted music to cover his blowing. When Coram refused, failure. The dollar bill trick, foiled by securing tape along the tank's edge, and again, failure. The next day, Coram and Heydrich flew to Dallas for another taping session. On this day, Coram removed his previous restrictions. I told the sound technician to inform us that the mic levels had to be turned down due to feedback. We had a problem with the audio. We'll have to do it over with you. All right. With the mic obstacle eliminated, the pencils moved. Later, Heydrich attempted to transfer his pretended power through Coram. But unbeknownst to Heydrich, Coram blew on the pencil first. Heydrich was startled. For the dollar bill test, Coram supplied a tank where only one corner would not meet the table flush. This corner was turned away from Heydrich. The dollar bill remained motionless. The glass is so hard to work through sometimes. How about if, how about if we turn it? Maybe, would that help you? Yeah. 
turn yeah, it. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It's still... With the corner now accessible, movement. And when Heydrich again pretended to transfer his power through Coram, trying to get to go back the other way, Coram brought the bill to life. Never knowing that Coram was a professional magician, Heydrich was again bewildered. You already done it twice. Yeah, but just the thing, right? Something's not right. What? I don't know. It's going, to look, it's going to look good from here. Cut off the film. No, do you think that we're going to do something with it? At a later taping... Is that what you're saying? That's uh, not right? Heydrich is reluctant to demonstrate the page-turning trick. I don't want to do it. I don't. Forget the part about it. He becomes that, increasingly yeah. agitated. If, because this, I don't, I don't understand, man. This ain't cool at all. And finally, explodes. <laughs> makes me mad every time. Heydrich and his claims of power were a destructive force. So when you were a young boy and, and you were beaten and you were shoved aside and mistreated, you, you started a fantasy world of your own. Well, see what happened. A lot of my pain, like I'd get pain, like in fact, I got scars all over my stomach when I was young. I'd think about going to the moon. And I remember when uh, my dad, he'd taken, he'd tie me to a barrel so I couldn't run or, or he'd, and he'd take a, you ever seen those little ping pong balls? take two of those things, stick them in my mouth and, and tie my head, and he'd whoop me so I couldn't holler loud because he'd be drunk. And, and see, what I think is about laying my head down and just, I would imagine rolling and going up to the moon. And by the time I got back, the beating's up. To eliminate any future threat, Coram believed Heydrich must reveal not only his past, but how and why he used his claims of power. Because of Coram's persistence, what you are about to see and hear is the first confession of a leading psychic. Heydrich begins by telling of his fascination with magic and magicians at the age of nine. And he'd show how easy it is to trick people. And uh, you stand and you talk to the person and all of a sudden he'd move his hands around and he'd throw the paper over the guy's head. And everybody in the audience is laughing and, and, and this guy's going, now what are they laughing at? And he opened his hand the guy goes like that. And, and it's just a sleight of hand. The guy's paying attention to the hand movement, and actually you're throwing the paper over his head. Things like that impressed me, how, how uh, close-minded a lot of people were. I mean, they, they, it's so fascinating to see how people would just miss things just like that. The obvious things they'd miss. You know, we have something in common. We both learned our first trick at nine years old, but I could read and write, and I had somebody to teach me. How did you learn? I mean, you couldn't even read and write. And my, I, basically, I, I conned my teachers into reading to me. <laughs> How did you do that? Just, I guess I'd have that little sweet voice that I could just do that. And Miss King used to read for me. She's a real good teacher. Her name's Miss King. And, and she used to read for me. And, and I just sat back and think, with, you know, Harry Houdini. You got these, all these magicians who make rabbits disappear. And Harry Houdini makes an elephant disappear. And, the, and like, there's ways that I would think back, and I, I'm trying to use the obvious thing, and, and it, I was right. Harry Dennis would ha he'd have a box, and from the audience, he'd have someone look into a box. Except it looks like it's, it's you know, a triangle, but it's not. It's just like this, and then it's got another piece here. And actually, when it closes the curtains, it turns. So the elephant's actually behind. And he would make, you know, it's something I'd figure out, and it was right. And then I'd figure, well, geez. If, he, if people go crazy over that, maybe I should do something people go crazy over. But then I didn't. But Heydrich presented his like tricks as powers. Why did you feel that you had to tell them that you had powers that you didn't have? Because I, I wanted attention. My parents would never give it to me. I'd never, I would always be ignored or kicked around. And I had to do this and, uh, to make me feel good. It gave me confidence. Every time someone thought what I did was very good, but I'd never tell them what it was. I'd tell them it's something else. Because... If I tell them what it was, it's, oh, fine, it's just a trick. But I always tell them something else so that I continue to get a recognition. Heydrich uh, received his recognition on national television. You were on That's Incredible a few months ago, and you really tricked them. Hmm? Tricked the whole world. You tricked them really good. Do you remember uh, how impressed they were with you? What did it make you feel like? I did that to reach. It's like a hand reaching out for... Uh, recognition so that I can uh, later 
I don't know. I just, I just wanted to be known. I needed to be recognized. All my life I've been, and I hate keeping to go back to the past. I hate to, I hate to keep going back, but I don't know. I wanted to do that because it was different. And I, I knew, I just wanted to see how open-minded people were. I wanted to see if these people were so-called intelligent and I was so-called dumb. I mean, I, surely I'm here for a reason. My, I, my whole idea behind this in the first place was to see how dumb America was, how dumb the world is. Was to see how dumb America was, how dumb the world is. Heydrich, admitting that Coram had outwitted him, eventually agreed to demonstrate his technique. Years of practices over and over again, to where if you can show, like if I stand here and I say, okay, I'm going to move this lead, people's looking and they're waiting, so the lead moves, okay? It did move. Okay, actually it didn't move from power, it moved from something else, physical. But the Can people in the audience, what? it's moved from air currents. From where? From my mouth. But you can't tell it. See, it takes so many years of practice and getting this damn path <laughs> to where you can't see it, you see? And okay. I have to say that, too. Matter of fact, yeah. what you did, if I'm, not, if I'm not mistaken, you would take somebody and hold their hand and you tell them to point at the leaf and you'd say, now you will make the leaf move. Right, and they believe they make it. See, it's who called power of suggestion. Once you get a person to actually believe he can do something, then he, perhaps he can do it. What did you do, though, when you I, would hold what their I hand? Do, this is can, not, you, can you show it yeah, right now? All right, okay. let me explain what I'm doing. First of all, I'm not, I'm not going like that because that can be seen. I am taking air from inside and causing it to come out in a way to where nothing here shows. And if you can get the camera on my face, and you see this leaf, it moves, but my, nothing here moves, you see. And what I'd do is I'd, I'd grab the hand, and I'd, I'd do like this, see. And I'd already, it's already moved, because I can direct it in a way to where it's round. It's hit on right, every time. And my practice, you know, I spent a year and six months in solitary confinement, and all this time I've been thinking and thinking, and I said, that's it. This and you could take all the time you wanted to learn right. how to breathe and make right. it move. And I had, I'd spent hours and hours and hold my breath and breathing, different breathing controls, different things. So many ways that, I mean, I could, I could make deputies think someone touched them on their, their neck or something because I could breathe in a way and I'd be looking over here and they'd, they'd feel something and I'd say, that's a ghost. And they'd <laughs> right on the floor. <laughs> they'd go running out of the place. <laughs> And it's, it's something that was fascinating to me, and it got me recognition. I mean, every deputy in that jail was so frightened. <laughs> that guy's so possessed. Yeah. I remember when I was in, in, in Chaplin's office. Chaplin, you know, While in jail, Heydrich was taught by a chaplain to read and write. Although he exaggerates, Heydrich tells how he used his tricks to convert inmates. How do you convert people? How do you get them to go from bad to good? And he would tell me, well, you got to turn them on to, the, to Jesus, the Lord. And so what I did is like, he gave me a Bible, several Bibles, and I'd read them, you see. So I said, hmm, I got an idea. So I didn't tell Brother Gerald this, and I haven't never told him this, but I would convert 20 inmates a day. I would make that my limit. I have to do 20 inmates a day. And what I'd do is I'd get up and I'd start telling them about Jesus and stuff, and I'd read things, and they'd get interested. And then when I see that they're starting to get turned off, I says, hey, check this out, man. You don't believe it exists? I'll show you. <laughs> it's so funny. These guys' eyes, mmm. What did you do? I'd take, and I'd put, I'd take the pages of the Bible, and I'd say, if the Lord is here with me, make these pages move. What, and you'd open the pages? Of the I'd open the Bible, and I'd say, hold the Bible with something, and I'd say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, make these pages move. The guy's going, uh-oh. You know, every time it worked. And then I'd say, it's in you. And I'd take a pencil and I'd put it there and I'd say, i, I got to call the Lord and see if I can get him to do this. But you are going to have the power to do this if you accept the Lord. And the next thing, you know, you see this guy wearing a big cross and passing Bibles out to people. Before. When in Egypt, performing for family members of the late Anwar Sadat, Heydrich relates how he healed a woman stricken by a heart attack. She strongly believed that I could actually heal her. And she came right up. What did you do that made her believe that? by moving things and I would show her so many things and see I would touch her and she'd actually feel weird things but it's only in her mind she wanted to feel these things do you feel bad because you uh, no because I them? no I don't feel bad at all because one I, I it'd be different if you tricked them and then wrong 
but I tricked them for the good. Were adults fooled by what you did as well as children? Absolutely. In fact, there was more adults fooled by children. Than Why? Because an adult... A lot of the adults are looking for something like this. They want to see something like this exist. Dr. Ray Hyman, a professor of psychology at the University of Oregon and an expert on deception. He is noted for his work with the Defense Department exposing fraudulent psychics. He maintains that anyone can be deceived, such as the scientists who tested Heydrich. Then we are fooled not because we are mentally incompetent or gullible, but rather because we are intelligent, correct? Yes, and I, I'm glad you brought used the word gullible because there's a an illusion called the illusion of invulnerability or the not me syndrome. And when we see someone else being taken in, someone taken in by Heydrich, for example, if someone may watch this and say, gee, how gullible those people are to be taken in by something like that. And they say, that couldn't happen to me. Those people are gullible. And the very phrase of saying that person is gullible is a device, a psychological device to say, he's different from me. There's something wrong with that fellow. I couldn't fall for that. And unfortunately, that, to the extent that people really believe that they're different from other people who are being taken in, that it makes me even more susceptible to being taken in. In fact, if I were a con man, that's the kind of person I want to deal with. The only way to avoid being deceived, Danny, if you think about it, is to create a situation that's intolerable. We couldn't live with it. You have to trust to some extent. To, you have to trust your own intuitions at some times. You have to trust other people. Do you think that parents watching this particular program might think that what you were trying to start was a cult? Uh, cult. Yes. You say that you did not want to start a cult. No. Now, you know that you can't read and write. Right. And that you lack education. Right. Do you think the possibility existed that somebody could have used you to start a cult? Absolutely. Uh, uh, Kubergovic, King Maharian Kubergovic, who is the he? alphabet bomber who blew up the airport in L.A. Uh, he, he, I, he wanted to use me for an occult. Have Sirhan Sirhan, who is part of the occult. It's called Aliens of America, the AOA. And these people wanted to use me as a, a leader of their cult. How, let me ask you, how did they want to use you? To brainwash people. By, in other words... By showing them this power and saying that this power came from something that it didn't. You know, Jim Jones um, was of that type. Uh, he used tricks to enhance his uh, image with his... Um, he did conjuring type tricks? He did, he did magic tricks, yes, and he did some other kinds of cons. He actually had some people... Uh, pretend that they were sick so, so he could cure them. Uh, he stooped to uh, all these things as a way of enhancing his powers. So then a purported psychic could be used to form a cult? Oh yes, no question about it. Absolutely, like with uh, the Jim Jones incident. That, had never, that would have never taken place if people's mind would have been open. That would have been stopped. The thing with Sir Hanster... Yeah, I would, when you say people's minds, are you talking about the people in his group or people in the country. The country. Heydrich's arrest confirmed my initial fears that he might be a negative influence on young people whom he attracted with his claims of power. The reason for his arrest was that he received several stolen guns from three teenage students who were members of his studio. Because of my training as a magician, it's very easy for me to understand how each of us can be deceived. But I couldn't expose James Heydrich with vindictiveness because of his tragic background. After the attempted assassination on President Reagan, a purported psychic, Tamara Rand, had claimed she had predicted the assassination attempt. Her prediction later turned out to be nothing more than a cruel hoax. Now, as a magician, I tell my audience that everything that I do is a trick. The Tamara Rands and James Hydricks, however, play in our fantasies and try and turn them into their own distorted realities. The Charles Manson and Jim Jones reality were life-destroying. So when you hear of someone claiming to have psychic or supernatural powers, just be cautious. Until the next time, I'm Danny Corum, and thank you for joining us.